Hey there, in today's video, I'm gonna review the Boston Marathon 2024. I'm making this video because I made a video previewing my Boston Marathon 2024, all the things that happened in Ireland before I came. And this is all about all the things that happened in America since I've arrived. And the race is tomorrow. Today is Sunday, I think it's the 14th, isn't it? Yeah, Sunday the 14th of April, 2024. The race is tomorrow at 6.58. It's nice and early in the morning. I'm doing what I always do, staying on Irish time. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about a little bit about the travel over, the hotel, the expo, the Boston 5K, which I highly recommend. Some experiences essentially about what's happened since I got to Boston and preparations for the race. Then I'm gonna tell you about my racing strategy, what I think will happen. Then I'm gonna run the race and I come back or record a piece of camera about what did happen. And finally, I'm gonna go through what went right and what went wrong. <laughs> and uh, Hopefully more right than wrong, but we'll see. With marathon running, you just really never know. And as always, this video might be long, so the chapter marker is down below, so you can skip on through to the bits you might be interested in, like the end. <laughs> Let's get going. The trip to Boston was pleasantly straightforward. I got a taxi from my house in Dublin to the airport, arrived, got through checking in in JetBlue, and through regular security and through American immigration in 47 minutes, which was a record for me. You pre-clear American customs in, and immigration in Dublin, which is a tremendous, uh, it's a tremendous resource. It's, 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 you know once you're through there, you're in America. It's a very, makes for a very relaxed trip for me as ever. The officers were, was really friendly and helpful. And of course, as soon as you say you're in Marathon, people, anyway. They're, they're, they're always curious to find out about marathons. And so you, you chat away and it was really a very, very pleasant experience. Through I went with JetBlue, they don't have lounges, but you can pay to get in. I paid to get into the, I think it's 51st in green. I think it was 40 bucks, something like that. In I went and sat there for a couple of hours, making videos, doing various things, uh, concentrating on not overeating <laughs> all the food. I didn't actually, I just took it very handy. And it's a nice place to plane spot on the runway. I could see my JetBlue plane coming in always reassuring and without too much fuss or bother I was soon on JetBlue. JetBlue are the sponsors of the Boston Marathon so it was nice to fly them. They didn't mention anything about I, you know, the flight to Boston a couple of days before the marathon. I thought somebody would mention something you know but anyway didn't happen. Um, I mean it did on Aer Lingus when I went to the New York Marathon but anyway uh, maybe they didn't realize anyone was going to the marathon. Who knows I was in my usual standard gear that I always am, my uh, traveling trousers, my, my uh, Path Projects trousers, and uh, a sore running top of my, my various bits and bobs that I use exactly the same time for uh, every year for traveling, and my Nike Zoom X fly shoes that are really easy to get in and out of and very comfortable for traveling. So it was very easy uh, getting on to JetBlue. I flew Mint. I think it cost me $1,800 round trip, which was okay for, for business class. It, I don't mind shelling out on uh, when it's coming to the a marathon because you just want to have your legs as relaxed as possible. Now with a plane with 27 people in it or whatever, that would have been easy. But either way, it was, uh, it was very pleasant. The, you have a little cocooned little area. It was really nice. The plane is modern, single aisle. But the, the strange thing was they, they always kept the mood lighting on. They, all, they kept all the window blinds down. So it was very blue the whole time. And uh, it, it's the only plane where I stand up, I bang my head. <laughs> I, it's because it's a narrow body plane and they're, they have sufficient overhead lockers for your baggage. But yeah, I kept banging my head. But it was very, really very pleasant. There was plenty of choice in movies. I didn't watch any, despite the fact there was loads. I didn't watch any. I just... I just well, played with my spreadsheets and thought about the marathon and, and, and did a lot of editing, that, that, that kind of thing. So I did that all the way over and the flight passed uneventfully. We landed in Logan uneventfully. The food was actually really good on uh, JetBlue. You get a choice of various dishes and there was lots of pasta and chicken options. And that's kind of what I was going for in the run up to the marathon. And without further ado, we arrived in Logan. When we took off from Dublin, the weather was sort of wet and blustery. And when we landed in Logan, the weather was kind of wet and blustery and I, I thought of showing clips and asking you to identify which is which but they were, they were pretty much the same it was just like about a six hour gap to get into the identical weather and very easy to get into Logan the bag took a little bit to get out of the terminal but then pretty quickly I was all set to go. I'm staying here in the Homewood Suites by Hilton at the Boston Seaport 
I kind of had to decide early on on a, on, well, I decided on, on a hotel. Hotels are expensive in Boston for the marathon weekend and you just have to kind of suck it up. And it was a question of downtown where the rooms might be smaller or here, which is slightly on the edge of town, but the room is, is big and it's, it does a microwave and there's all that kind of stuff. And the day before the marathon, I need to hang out and not go anywhere. And so having a big room to make a video, you can probably see by now, tell by now I'm using various locations in the room to make the video. I haven't actually sat on this couch at all when I'm here. This sort of Ottoman thing or whatever it is, it's kind of handy for putting things on, my bib number, my, my shoes. Um, the, uh, <laughs> I use magnetic race dots, which I'm a huge fan of. They go in the little holes in each of the corners of your bibs. But to get them on is kind of tricky because there's a magnet on one side, magnet on the other side. And I found <laughs> that stuffing my vest inside in a pillow is the easiest way. And then you lay out the, the um, where exactly where you want the vest to go. I stick it with some temporary magnets loosely and then I, anyway, and then I somehow get that off and onto myself tomorrow morning. But the hotel is pretty nice. One of the great things was it all works via an app. Second time I stayed in Hilton Honors kind of thing or Homewood Suites or whatever. And there's a digital key on the door and digital check-in. So once the room is ready, which in my case was well before I got here, you get a note saying your room is ready and then you get your digital key once you come in. It's so operated the elevator without any bother because uh, it tells you it's synced to the phone. Then you come up and there's a digital key for the door. You put a little, there's a code, there's a room, but they encourage you to put a code. So I did something that I could remember that give me the room number. And then in I, in I come, and it's, it's pretty big, it's nice. I'm start hanging out here for a whole day today, trying to do nothing but make videos. So you'll have seen various shots as I'm moving around and putting the video together. And it is really pleasant. There's a gigantic refrigerator. There's a huge microwave. There's a kitchen that would, well, it's certainly bigger than my kitchen at home, but that's not saying a lot. But, but there's no table to eat everything at. Not, not that I particularly bothered about that. So it's there's lots of good things there's a swimming pool but it does a maximum of 12 people and i'm not going to go it's, it's 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 a token swimming pool everything is comfortable in the hotel in terms of the stay there's a there's a breakfast area a free breakfast kind of a complimentary breakfast but it's largely basic stuff but they have all i need which is oatmeal and they have bananas and there's bread and and, and things like that so that that's that's quite good the hotel is slightly remote from downtown Boston. There's a number seven bus that goes. Transport is easy enough to get around. It's, it's, it's well within walking distance for the, I've, and I've walked in and out several times. Initially when I got here, I thought, well, it feels a bit like no man's land. There's not an awful lot of stuff around. But when I got into central Boston, it's not like New York or Chicago where there's just stores and everywhere on the ground floor. The ground floor of a lot of, Central Boston is just a central business district and there's not a lot a lot of stuff there. There's lots of stuff. It turns out there's a street about uh, probably half a kilometer around. There's there's actually all the stuff near here. So I've actually, initially I was a bit worried to fire up, but I'm actually enjoying staying in, in this hotel more and more, as well as the, the digital app that opens the door. It also operates that you can operate the TV for, as a remote from your phone. And also it gives you a total guide to what's on. So it's a very easy place to say. And one thing I have to say is I'd say there are USB sockets all over the place. There's certainly on the lamps either side of the bed, there's one in each. And then there's a, a sort of radio thing. I think there's two in that. There's several, there's one in each of these lamps, I think all around the place. Anyway, you won't, you won't, there's no lack of USB sockets, which is something I need because I've got a lot of gear to charge. But yeah, I'm very happy with the hotel choice. The Boston Marathon Expo is located in the Heinz Convention Center on Boylston Street. The location is superb. It's right, it's downtown. It's right beside the finish line or the finish line is beside it, more like. And you can also see the Boylston, Hereford, the signs people like and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's really good. The disadvantage is it's absolutely jammed. It's open to the public. And in, in res one respect, the most important thing is to pick up your bib. And that's really easy there. You sort of pick up the bib in these very wide side aisles. So if you only go in to pick up your bib, I'd, it, it would score really highly from the central location. Go in, pick the bib up, no fuss, and get out. The other parts of it aren't so good. It, it, there's When you go into the, all the stands that are associated with it, there's a sort of rag bag of them. They're not well signposted as to what's what. 
the you go in and the Adidas shop was absolutely jammed. I mean, there's just not enough space for it or, or whatever. Nothing like it was in New York with New Balance or Berlin with um, Adidas or also with um, uh, Nike in Chicago. It, it really was a scrum of people, very tight. It was, you know, it was like, reminded me of Filene's basement from a long time ago or some sort of department store. It didn't, it didn't feel classy that's the first thing and so i it probably i didn't want to buy any of stuff i wasn't that interested in the, the jacket i wouldn't wear it really and so i wasn't interested in a lot of stuff i wasn't i am interested in various memorabilia stuff like like this this is much more interesting to me but anyway i i, I went in i there was a couple of places i wanted to see abbott had a stand with their world major marathon gold club i got a text saying come by for your free gift i i i held my breath anyway it was um what was it? It was uh, oh, something useless. Uh, I, I can't remember. Maybe it was a, a neck thing or so, something like that. I don't, I don't know. Something that, anyway. They had to wait ages for it. Their database wasn't working. It felt distinctly unspecial. What was special was seeing the names of everybody, including Chris, who was on the six marathon winner uh, wall. That was, that was really nice. I got a notification that because I was over 60, 32 point health had a... Um, a stand I could go to and I get another free gift. It turned out to be quite useful as a series of um, magnetic uh, magnetic things for attaching bibs. I use race dots, but it was kind of nice to get. Or they're not, sorry, they're not magnetic. They, they pinch through. But anyway, they were nice to get. It was, you know. And they had a wall with all the people over 60s names on it and you could color in your name. I kind of like that. That was kind of nice. It turns out there's 3,000 people over 60 in the, eight in the race. So perhaps a lot of people like me <laughs> took advantage of the age qualification. Anyway, there's a lot of a lot of old folks like me in this in this particular race, which is which will be which will be fine. So I'm looking forward to that. So it, the other thing, I went to the stride stand. That was really good. Uh, I wanted to ask them a few technical questions and things like that, and it was really good. I'm running. I'll, I'll go through my stride running plan later on, but I am running using the stride. And I just want to check a couple of things. I got a new iPhone, and I got a couple of other things. I just want a few. Checking, checking a few things, it was really good to do. Super helpful, really easy to do. Apart from that, there was a stand advertising Jamaica, which doesn't need any advertising to me. I went to school there and uh, they were talking about some marathons. It was great, it was great to have a chat with people from there. And Jamaica's had the same branding since I was there, which is really strong. It's really strong, something that interests me, but the, the logo of the com country and everything is exactly the same as when I was there and all the better for it. So I, I did that. But but everything was, I mean, I probably missed loads of stuff because there was just, you know, there was usually stuff, people selling so Shox headphones, they're everywhere, they're always at every expo, and a couple of things here and there, marathon tours or something like that. But largely it was overpacked and disappointing. But the important bit, the location of picking it up to bib, was done really well. And maybe that's all that matters. You can get the Adidas stuff online if you really like it. I ran the Boston 5K yesterday. Dunno. Uh, nice medal, actually. It's it's really it's, it's a really nice, simple medal. But I ran the Boston 5K. I arrived on Friday and ran the race on Saturday. But it was really good for a, a lot of different reasons. I didn't run the 5K in New York. I regretted not running it. And I didn't run it because I'd run the 5K, the Abbott 5K in Chicago, and kind of lost the run of myself running downtown, going too fast and things like that. Too soon, close to the marathon. But I regretted not doing it in New York because I think it runs in a lot through Manhattan and I would like that. And I, I regretted not doing that. And so when the Boston one came up, I decided to do it. There were 10,000 people that said in the race, my, my bib was 10,000 and something number. So I don't know, but they say there's 10,000 in the race. And it was, it was great because it is in Boston Common. So you, you, where the buses are tomorrow morning, that's where the, the, the start and finish line is. Got me really used to, to getting there. And that was, I put, put my, my me at ease i ran really easily I, I didn't go fast at all i started slow a couple of times i sped up here and there to check my race pace against the two watches and all this kind of stuff my stride foot pods doing all of that sort of stuff really in, enjoyed it and the camaraderie beforehand you're in a pen with people and you're you, you know you get talking to people about bits and bobs and people more experienced than me of running the boston marathon so that was really good but the best thing was running under mass avenue and then turning right on Hereford, left on Boylston. It was really good because there is a dip under, under Mass Avenue just towards the finish. And after a lot of hills and all that, I, 
it's really good to know hills in advance. I find the second time you run a hill is always easier. So that was really good. And then you go up, you turn right in Hereford, you go up slightly uphill, which was, I'll show some, some B-roll of it here. But going up Hereford was kind of good. And then you go left on Bolson. It wasn't as, as steep up Hereford as I thought it might be. And then you go left on Bolson where you immediately go slightly downhill. You think the end is nigh, but it's nigh plus and plus a bit because you can see it, but it takes a bit longer to get there. And that sort of practice at the end really suited my way of, of, of the marathon, of knowing exactly. I'm much better when I, when I know what's going on. I, I, I'm much, much better. And I'm really looking forward to that. So from the point of view, it was also really good. I mean, if you want to film it, it was really good for filming a dry, uh, instead of filming it in the marathon, fiddling with cameras and all that. It was really good to do that yesterday, where I could stop and fiddle if I wanted to and, 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 and get shot. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. I'd recommend the Boston 5K to anyone. There was an actually nice t-shirt I got as well. And well, I mean, I mean, you pay to enter, but, and there was Gatorade and all sorts of things at the end. Nice camaraderie. And yeah, it's kind of, Nice little medal. I really, yeah, I actually probably like this medal more than the winner's one, or not the winner's one, the, the finisher's one that I might get at the end of Boston tomorrow. Before I go through my performance expectations for tomorrow's marathon, I thought I'd just go through a couple of things about how I got to the marathon. I think for a number of people, there's probably, or I imagine, there's probably not much big deal to qualifying for Boston. They sort of can run a qualifying time in a regular marathon pretty much routinely. I'm not one of those people. I'm one of those people on that, that cusp that it takes a while to get in and that it was never certain when I started this journey about four years ago. So if I go down through this, my first goal was to break four hours, which, which I did in, after a couple of marathons. I ran four virtual marathons. I started during COVID, I ran four virtual ones. And I also ran Chicago in 2021, Buckeye, Arizona, 2022, Zurich, 2022, Berlin, 2022 all while trying to qualify for Boston. That would have always been a target, which I ultimately achieved in the next marathon, which was Rotterdam in 2023. And in terms of mileage or kilometer ridge, if there's such a thing, 7,339.26 7, kilometers, 4,576.4 miles of running to get here. And I'm not certain I'd ever qualify again. I'm not certain I'd want to qualify again. I'm not sure I'd, I'm, I'd love to qualify, but I'm not sure I'd want to run and, and deny someone a, a place. There's lots of other marathons I could run. But yeah, it took, it took me a long time. And when you ask around, it seems that, that that is the case for a lot of runners. I don't know if it's the majority, the minority. I don't know. But certainly it was uh, every other marathon I ran in the back of my official marathon, in the back of my head was, you know, Maybe I'll break four hours. Maybe I'll run without stopping. Maybe I'll qualify for Boston. That was always the kind of rank, wasn't it? <laughs> now, this is the one marathon where I, I'm for certain not trying to qualify for Boston. I'm trying to enjoy it to the most of my performance abilities of enjoyment. Enjoy the Boston Marathon as best I can. And that will underpin what I'm trying to achieve tomorrow. My plan for tomorrow is to enjoy the race that's my main plan. I have no performance objective per se, except I would like to run it. Now, all the indications are good. I've, I've um, no pressure on me. I'm not trying to qualify for Boston. Uh, training went really well. Uh, my injury, my back injury went away. That, that was really good and it's unlikely to occur before tomorrow. You never know, but it's unlikely. All the signs are really good. I've been feeling really fit. Mentally, I feel great, but the marathon is long and it's a grind and you never know what happens. In Dublin, I trained specifically. I went as, I have a baseball coach, uh, uh, Jim, Jim Reach, and Jim always said, you know, practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. It's a mantra that I've always lived with and I, it's in, well, since I met Jim anyway. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a real thing for me. It's, it's perfect practice makes perfect. So I designed a route that Eamon on Strafford described as super specificity, which I think summed it up, where I was trying to replicate the 15, 16 miles, 25k to the start of the Newton Hills in Boston in Dublin. So I, I ran up out to step aside in Dublin and I ran down to the bottom of uh, Dorky and then I planned to run, effectively taking all the sort of elevation that you would, it, it, Boston is mainly downhill and Dublin I went up and down because I live in a valley. And um, I then planned to go up, uh, so in uh, Heartbreak Hill, the Newton Hills, 
I think it's eight kilometers, five miles. This was about three kilometers, but steeper and higher. So really burn the legs off you. <laughs> that was the plan. And, and I did that and I got over that and I felt really great at the end and I rolled down into, uh, into Dalkey. And then I, partly because of that, I got, got a lot of confidence out of that. And I did a lot of, of, of that kind of training anyway, but that was the, the super specific one. And I did, did that. And in that, I, I, I wore my, uh, these, the Metaspeed Edge, the Edge Paris. I had, I tried the Alpha Fly 3s and the uh, Edge Paris. And they're great shoes. And I can't, can't say that any of them would be faster or not. I'm definitely gonna try some, uh, maybe a, a 5K or a 1K shootout this year in my, in my uh, Alpha Fly 3s. Great shoe, but just because I'd gone up the hill in this and because these are lighter and be bearing in mind what I wanted to get from Boston, I chose to run in those shoes tomorrow. One of the other things I'm doing tomorrow is I'm running with a stride foot pod, or rather two stride foot pods. They'll give data to my watch and they'll give me a power calculation. Now stride works particularly well. I use it in training all the time as you, if you watch these videos, you know. But I've never raced according to stride. I've never just kept going looking at my watch. I've been looking at or my stride power. I've been looking at my Garmin or my chorus pace. And that was largely because I was running flat marathons, Chicago, Buckeye, Zurich. Uh, they're, all, they're all sort of flat, Berlin, they're all sort of flat marathons. Boston, I think, is ideal for stride. And the first thing I want to do is not go out too fast. Now, my power numbers, it will come as no surprise. I have every kilometer of every marathon on a, on a giant spreadsheet. And I, the, the, the spreadsheet clearly proves that in the marathons where I went out to where I went out fast, I finished slowly and vice versa. Except, and the one exception is Rotterdam, where I qualified for here by running at the same pace the entire marathon. And in that race, I ran at 267 watts. Now, the stride is telling me I run at 272 watts. So my, for here, because I'm in good shape, my plan is to go somewhere between 267 watts and 272 watts or lower, that's the maximum target. And to do that, while I roll my gentle way down into, uh, down, in, down into the start of the Newton Hills. That's my plan is to go down at no higher than those paces. Then to run up the hills, I, I, like, I like hills. I like hill running, as long as I don't arrive too tired, I actually would enjoy those hills. I, I like running up hills. My plan is then to go up at that, that pace and towards the top, if I've got any anything left, I'll try and maybe up the pace going up the last hill and then crest over the top of the hill. And then I'm going to try and see what I've left. There is a marathon plan, 10, 10, 10, uh, 10 miles easy, uh, 10 miles moderate, 10K hard. I'm going to try a, a variation of that where the last 10K, if I have anything left, I'd like to roll down into, into uh, Boston. I know that I've got the giant sit go sign and I know that that's going to be slightly uphill and I know that's going to be harder than I thought but the practice yesterday in the 5k was great for giving me confidence a in the shoe b in the watches uh, c in myself and seeing the finish knowing that I've, I've I've it's a kind of mad thing but just knowing that you've done it already even if it's if I can gives you a little bit of confidence because you know what's around the twists and what's around the turns and that's a big thing for me. So the, Mac, the, the thing I want to do is a personal best in terms of enjoyment. If I, can, I think it'd be tough to beat New York for, uh, I think my overall uh, Rotterdam was, was thrilling and enjoying for, for, for both things. But uh, yeah, New York, personal favorite, personal best in terms of enjoyment for kind of different reasons. But tomorrow, yeah, I'm hoping to kind of go one step further. That is my performance target for the Boston Marathon 2024. Enjoy the hell out of it. <laughs> took long enough to get here. So what exactly happened in the Boston Marathon 2024? I got up on a very beautiful day. My watch told me that the Boston Marathon was starting and it told me, my Garmin did, told me what the weather would be like, which was hot. And it was really good. I went down, I got up early, stayed in Irish time, so I was up early doing various things. And then I went down for breakfast. Breakfast in the hotel was at, it turned out it was at five o'clock in the morning on marathon day, usually six o'clock in the morning. But I went down about 5.30. I drank some coffee here beforehand and a couple of things like that. Went down for breakfast and the hotel had laid out a really nice spread of things. Um, bagels, five hour energy drink, which I didn't take. 
I've, I've used it before, but I didn't, I didn't bring it this particular time. I haven't used it on a marathon. And they had laid out uh, cliff bars and various things like that. It was, it was really thoughtful bananas, all sorts of stuff that you might want to uh, bring to the marathon and the little goodie bags you carried them. And that was, that was really very thoughtful. And uh, I was very pleased with that because I did want to, I was going to make some, some sandwiches myself before I went up and peanut butter and jelly or something like that, but I didn't need to. It's about three or four kilometers in from the hotel to the where the buses were and I decided to walk. I could have waited for a bus but to be honest I was happy walking and there was several people we walked in. You get to Boston Common. It, it, overall the first thing to say is it is incredibly well organized. There is, you, you get the feeling that uh, in the, I, I, the expo from the purposes of, of, of getting your bib, it's extremely well organized. But everything else, the expo is, isn't great. But everything on the day was, was organized kind of to perfection. Dave McGillivray, who is the race director, he ran it yesterday. I think he, I think he might have run it 40 or 46 times or something. And he's, he's, he's not that much older than me. I mean, I think maybe, maybe 60. Anyway, he, he ran it yesterday. But you could see that it was it was just so well organized. I'll go through some of the bits that was organized. But I arrived down. Uh, my primary concern on some of these days is where the porta potties, and and they the, the common is huge, so you can just wander around the common. But fairly quickly, they they went through the various uh, start waves. I was in wave three, I think. But you could go in if you wanted to use a toilet. The, the guy said you can you can go in because the toilets are beyond the, the sort of barriers. But you go in. And then I, you, you, it's like all of these things. People queue right at the start. And then if you wander down, there was plenty where you might wait two or three. I, <laughs> I was in a, there's a PA, a lot of PA. It was the same day, four days, a lot of come on Eileen going on. And then uh, I'm, in, I'm in the toilet and all I can hear is shake, shake, shake by, by um, whatever her name is. What is her name? Taylor Swift. So uh, I'm, uh, <laughs> How could I forget Taylor Swift? Anyway, I'm uh, I'm there, and then you, you sort of there was the place to sit. I sat sat down. There's some sort of place, and I sat down. And then before too long, we were getting on board the the buses. And again, there's a big line of buses. It's really well organized. I just went down to the end, and I thought we'd be waiting ages. But one of the things that they do in the Boston Marathon is there's lots of small little things you have to go through, but they go quickly and they keep your mind mentally active. I was yeah. So then I. I got onto the, you get you queue into the bus and, and I thought, well, we'd be queuing for ages for the bus. Maybe it was three or four minutes before they let us on the bus. And as soon as the bus was filled, you're pretty much gone. And uh, we were out in the road and it was, it was a very enjoyable trip out. You, you go through highways uh, initially and then you go out into really rural areas. And then you realize you really are starting in the countryside and you're, you're going down these really narrow roads. And, and you realize the inconvenience that a lot of people must have for the, for the day. But, the people didn't didn't seem to mind, at least from what I could see. And you, you park it, and the bus sort of stops, and and you get out, and then and you walk, and you get to this sort of staging area. And I, they give you really good documentation beforehand, and I studied it and looked at Apple Maps and Google Maps and all these kind of things that I do to extremes. And um, I arrive, and I see lots and lots of people queuing for toilets, and I'm going, oh no! And there was a guy. <laughs> You know, when you're an older dude and when you're talking to other older dudes, yeah, conversation <laughs> turns to the old waterworks. And this guy was saying that he wears a, uh, he, he told me to go into CVS. I usually call it CVC by mistake. But anyway, he told me to go into CVS and, and buy myself a little nappy thing that I could wear on the bus <laughs> and just go in that, which is what he does apparently. <laughs> and, you know, whatever works. But uh, I, I didn't. I contemplated it, but I didn't. And... <laughs> I get off the bus and I'm, I'm, I'm looking around as ages of queues. But one thing I learned in New York is the further in you go, the less queues there seems to be for, for, for porta potties and things like that. And I was, you know, when you go to Berlin, they have the porta potties in the, in, the, in the pens and everything. But anyway, I went in and much to my great relief in more sense than one, they had the European urinals where four guys stand around and, and they had a little screen around it. And, the one thing I would say, well, first of all, I hats off to the Boston Market. They don't do it in Chicago. Maybe they've done it since I ran Chicago. They don't do it in New York, but they did it here. It made it incredibly easy if you're a guy. And if you're a guy and you're not go, going to sit down, use those, free up the other spaces because other people, mainly women, 
were queuing for, I don't know, the queues were, were endless to, to get to these things. We'll come on to that because there is a kind of other solution. But there was, it was nice, it was a little running track, you could run around, very signs, welcome to Hopkinton, or it all starts in Hopkinton, and all these kind of signs about the, the marathon. And I think, oh, well, I'm going to be here for, you know, an hour or so, like I just was in, in like I was in um, New York. But you weren't, you, you were on the walking down, they, they, it was it was just so well done. They say wave so and so will be going such and such a time, and then there was there was various corrals, and you went into various parts of the there was various streams, and again you kept moving. And just as I was sort of going through, I was thinking to myself, gee, the one thing I, I would really like is another top up of sun cream. I thought you know I could really be using the sun cream again. And then there was all the people who I, I, I don't know all the way down into Hopkinton. They have these barriers. That looked like they're really easy. To, I, I jumped over one the day before or the, during the 5K to get out. But they're really hard to get out if you're thinking it. And there's no need. And as you go along, um, there's people handing out, they had these giant vats of sun cream. It was really fantastic. I mean, if you needed it, you won. You, and then, it, then you went on and you walked for quite a, quite a bit, but very enjoyable, obviously, on sunny days. Very easy to move, it's fantastic. And lots of people wishing you well. And, you go on down and then there's another big parking lot where there's actually a lot of toilets and again the same sort of man's kind of thing that I use and it's in a sort of horseshoe but it, the, the, the queues there were very small so if you were worried uh, leaving the other place the queues there were very small uh, for maybe th four or five deep and I was thinking to myself gosh I, 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 would, I should have brought some lip balm with me and then I saw there's a ph pharmacy a CVS pharmacy uh, right there and so I thought wow and literally off this this sort of bay area and so I went and I, I bought some some Carmex which I'm kind of addicted to and there was there was about I bought three packs of so only packs of three and I came out and I had stuffed them in the shorts and then I came across a table and it just after that and it's a table where people collect all that kind of stuff that people put on last minute beforehand so there was um, there was chafe gel. There was all sorts of pharmaceutical products on this table manned by volunteers. And so I gave them two of the lip balms. I just said, look, you know, um, and they were, I feel like they were grateful for that. And it was just, it was, it was really nice. So the, the mood was really good. And then you, you, you go into Hopkins, you turn right and you go up this hill and you see, you start to go into the pens, which are super organized. I mean, the organization was just extraordinary. I'll, I'll say that, I'll probably keep saying it. It was extraordinary. And then you're aware you're standing in the pen, you can see that there's a certain military presence on some of the rooftops and maybe we'll come back to that. Uh, and, and, and the race starts and I was thinking, I wonder what what will happen. And it, 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 there had been a lot of talk that you, it was very jammed up at the start, but I didn't find it that way. And, and I don't know if it's my 12th or 13th marathon, but, uh, but I, I didn't find any problem at the start with getting caught up with people or people zigzagging or anything like that. I found this to start really good. I found it much steeper than I thought it was going to be in terms of the downhill. I headed off. And um, at this stage, things were going really well. I was going to try to do my stride plan on my Apple Watch and ignore my Garmin. But, but I was below my stride numbers. It, I think it takes stride a little, dare I say, it takes a while to get into its stride for some reason, but at least for me. Um, well, it's got to it's got to take a, a certain data set rather than just random stuff when you're initially kicking off. And, and according to my Garmin, I was going too fast, and this was. But I planned to just follow the, the stride, so I was lower than the stride number, stride numbers, but I was going out by five minutes and five seconds. But it was quite downhill. So, but I, I decided fairly early on to, to 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 jam on the brakes and 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 go go slowly, and I did that, and I was rolling along. It's very enjoyable. Now, the first, uh, all of the things that I thought about the marathon, there were some very different things that I thought. First of all, it's, it's very rolling. I mean, it's, I know it's downhill, but there's a lot of uphills in it. And it's, it's rolling along and there's, there's isolated people supporting you. I stopped at every single station and drank water. I drank, and which I usually, you know, I'm a light, I would consider myself a very light sipper in a marathon. But I drank at every single station. I drank water beforehand, and I drank at every single station. Any time I was offered water, I drank water. And there are a huge number of stations. They're very, very frequent. They're manned by Gatorade first, and then 
the polar spring water. They're on opposite sides of the road and they're really, really long. They're the longest I've seen in any marathon. It was really superb, you, you know, but every single one I, I, I drank water at. I weighed myself before this, when I got up in the morning, I, I brought my weighing scales. <laughs> what sort of loon does that? Anyway, I brought my weighing scales and, and um, I, had, I had hit just below 80 kilograms, which is my, my target before I left Ireland. You always put on a kilogram or two in, in, in travel anyway, you put some on and then you also, you you don't want to be obsessed by weight a couple of days in because you want to eat properly. I don't overeat as it happens uh, beforehand. I don't carbo load to a huge extent. I just swap out other things for carbs generally. But one of the things I found was that over the course of the race, because I came back and I drank everywhere and I drank a couple of bottles of water at the end and I came back and weighed myself again. And I was still three kilograms lighter. And I thought when I got onto the scales, I thought I'm going to be about the same weight because I took in so much water. I was totally, completely and utterly encrusted in salt. And uh, yeah, I, I, but I, I took it all the time, but there was plenty of it, but I was, there was never a moment when I wasn't thirsty <laughs> during the race, I did, which, was, which was a real surprise to me. The other thing that surprised me hugely about the race, and this is a huge surprise, was Boston has a reputation for being a, a very, I suppose, a serious race. And uh, you know, it's, it's hard, it, it's hard to, for me, it's hard to qualify for Boston. For you, it might be easy, but for me, it was hard. And I think for a lot of people, it's hard because you read those books about, you know, and, you know, there's all that stuff. And you're kind of thinking you'll get into Boston and everybody will be running so way fast. And I was not running fast on the day, but there was a huge sense of camaraderie amongst everybody, more than any other marathon I've been in. There was, and I chatted to people as I went along, people chatted to me. It was kind of, it was, there was a really nice sense uh, of that and and it was the support was overwhelming I mean it was overwhelming the the noise I, I, people say it's going to be noisy and I think well you know they said New York was going to be noisy but what happens with Boston is it builds and it builds and it builds so that you're starting in rural areas and then you get through some towns but it's a bit isolated and then you go by the Wesley they call it the Wesley Tunnel at the Scream Tunnel but they're all on one side of the road it's not really like a tunnel but it's really, really loud. And it's really, really long. There's another one at Boston College. I'll show pictures of the two of them. And uh, it was just, it was, it was fantastic. It really was. For someone like me who was out trying to just enjoy themselves for the day, it, it was really fantastic. The, the, the support in the Boston Marathon is, is uh, when I ran New York, I, there was a lot of people cheering, but I didn't get the feeling ever that there was anyone cheering for me. But in Boston, I never got the feeling that there wasn't anybody cheering for me. It was a very strange, and lots of times, I can't remember my bib number, it's around somewhere, I'd be in the pictures, but people would call out my bib number. Lots of people said, stick your name on it, but I was a bit embarrassed about doing that for whatever reasons, I don't know. I didn't like drawing on my bib. But, but people would call out your number, go blah, 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 whatever my bib number was. And it was really, really nice. And as we went on towards it in the later parts of the race, I've never accepted anything really from people in, in, in marathons, but oh, when that guy offered me that watermelon, oh, fantastic. I took orange from a lady. I was offered all sorts of stuff. Uh, another woman gave me some Coke. She apologized because it was flat. I thought it was gonna be great. It was, it was great. And uh, loads of people offered me ice. I used the ice a lot on the back of my neck. In fact, I, I, I came back and I thought to myself, oh, I didn't get any sun. That was a, a good thing. And then I came out of the shower so I looked in the mirror and, and this is a long sleeve shirt, but all down here, I'm, I'm, I'm really red. You can probably see it around my neck. If you look at the pictures yesterday that I took after the finish, you might, you might see it. But I ran along and after about, got to about 15K, my plan had been to, to kind, of, kind of go all on the gentle downhills, all the way down to the start of the, the four hills in, in um, the four Newton Hills. But, but I started to, my vision, my vision started to, to, I've had an effect a couple of times, I may have said it before, at the end of a marathon where it's like there's a, 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 a milky lens goes across, but it's full of bright colors. All the colors are, are popping and merging and it's kind of a very odd effect. And I wondered, was I dehydrated? It doesn't seem to be a, something of dehydration, but, but this was, and it happened repeatedly. It kept happening and I kept slowing down. I was a bit worried that I might get dizzy and I might, you know, and I wanted to finish. So a couple of times I slowed down because of that. And of course, once you slow down, it's very hard to get going. You're <laughs> there was several times during, during the race when I think, you, you do know you're in a race uh, and maybe it'd be a good idea to run some of it. 
Um, one of the things I did was I ran all of the four Newton Hills. I ran those, I, I mean, running in a technical sense, that's not walking, but <laughs> it was slow as. But I, I, I was determined that each of the four Newton Hills I would run up, and I, I walked to downhills between them, and then I'd run up, and I chatted to people here and there by the, at the side of the road, and people were, uh, they were really nice, uh, loads and loads of fist pumps and hand slaps and all of that. It was, it was really nice. and. Uh, when I did want to run, not on not in the uphills, but but after that you go over and you, as you're coming out to, to Boston, I was uh, I had absolutely no problem running. I mean, once I, people would say, "Oh, you got it, you got it," you know, as I'm walking by, and so then I would just suddenly speed up and wave and run, and they'd go, "Ooh!" So I was capable of running, <laughs> uh, but just I <laughs> just I don't know. But I was really enjoying myself, and it was something Bartek had sent me. Uh, hi, Bartek had sent me a, an email beforehand saying to just forget the time, forget anything else just just enjoy it and I, I I I really 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 enjoyed it I'll show a clip at the end where I brought um various bits of tech with me I brought uh I'm wearing a, a glucose monitor for future review worked great it was very useful for me particularly in the training so I did that it's an M1 by uh, Ultra Human which links with my Ultra Human ring I brought the Garmin F4955 I brought the Apple Watch that all worked, two stride foot pods were perfect and I also uh, I brought a microphone, a, a DJI, the, the, the recorders in my pocket and I brought that because I wanted to get some uh, better quality sound if I could here and there and so I, di so I did that and at the end I, I did a couple of pieces of camera which I'll show at the end once I've so I shut up, I'll, I'll, I'll stop and you'll, you'll, but the noise was un, unreal when we came down into Boston and it, it really is hilly. I mean, it's not the, it's not, <laughs> it's not the Newton Hills so much. It's all the other ones. It's the, the Newton Hills you know and you mentally prepare for, but it's, it's all the other rolling up and down. And it wasn't that my quads were killed or anything. Um, all my uh, uh, equipment worked well. I didn't have any chafing. I, uh, my sore running top was perfect. My Janji shorts were perfect. I was able to put my my uh, my gels in the back without any bother. I stopped taking the gels just because I forgot that I just completely and utterly forgot. But it didn't matter because at this stage I was running, walking. And I kind of stopped taking the gels sometime around Heartbreak Hill. And I was just drinking water every time I could get it. Um, but it was it was that that went well. And then when we headed down to Boston, it, it just, the ratcheting up of the noise. So I made a piece, which I'll, I'll, I'll play at the end, where was from the start of, of um, when you come out of the Mass Tunnel and then you go, you go um, right on Hereford, left on Boston. And so I filmed that. It's, it's the most famous, I mean, I say this, it's the most famous couple of corners in marathon running. And, and it was... It was truly special, and the noise was extraordinary. I can't because the the, the mic would blow, or the you know the the the, the it also records the sound on the iPhone, but it kept the sound down. So it was uh, it was really good. The shoes were fine. I I, I kept looking out for uh, in the pen and just beforehand. I was counting how many Metaspeed Edge Paris versus Metaspeed Speed Sky Paris. I could count. There seemed to be a few people more on the edge, but I could have run in and anything, and you know, I'd say much the same. Very enjoyable. My left foot hurt a little bit uh, on the under underfoot late in the race, but nothing that was really affecting my running. I'm fine today. I didn't feel particularly beat up at the end. I did feel very nauseous. I, I won't lie. I was. I got the bus back to the hotel, and I was thinking, hmm, <laughs> this could go pear shaped any minute. But it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was fantastic. The, the big thing for me was that getting in was, was, was hard. Getting into Boston was hard. Running it was just, I don't know, it's a trip of a lifetime, really. So if I was running it again, what lessons would I learn? You know, well, everything that I did went right. The chafing, the gels, the food, the, everything went really right when I consider my, my overall goal, which was to enjoy myself. Everything went, went right, I didn't have any massive pains. Yeah, I could have run harder, yeah. But when I wanted to run, so when I'm running up um, <laughs> uh, towards the finish, I was, I was fine. Once I got running, I was, you know, it was, it was fine. I couldn't sustain it for a huge length of time. So I did realize that I'd put some effort in and was a bit tired, but the heat was, yeah, the heat was, was tricky, but yeah. 
I, I really enjoyed it. I was aware of all the people who wished me support along the way. My running buddy Liam sent me a text and I, so I stopped and I rang him because I thought he would <laughs> explain why I was going so slowly. And I was aware that people would be watching uh, stuff and following and thinking, oh, he's blown it this time, hasn't he? Uh, <laughs> again. But uh, yeah, I didn't blow the enjoyment. It was just fantastic. And one of the things that I was very aware of, uh, particularly as I came into Boston and, and can't go and say it, was how many people worked so hard on this. Um, you're, you're aware of what's happened in the, in the past of, of, of Boston in, in the marathon um, a number of years ago. And you know that the people there, so uh, the emergency respons responders, the security services, it's a, it's a holiday, it's Patriot's Day, it's Jackie Robinson Day, which is a big one for me. And it's, it's, it's a big day and a lot of people are volunteering for this. They don't have to. And they're aware of, of what happened in the past and what may happen again. And as you're running along, you see trucks with the, there's open the back and you see little anti-bomb stuff. And you, you, there's, there's, you know, there's a lot of that, you know, and you're aware of that. And you're aware that people are there working and they're there to, to help you out. And as well as those people, there, there's a lot, lot of people who are volunteering and they are, they're, they're, they're volunteering at an event that they know in the past something has gone terribly wrong at, and yet they're giving of their time, and again, on a holiday, to make your day something really special. And then there's the crowds. They must be thinking something similar, but yeah, there's a, you know, they say Boston's strong, and yeah, <clears throat> I wasn't very strong in the day, but uh, yeah, they were, so, and I'm, fully aware of all the support I got from, from all you guys and everybody, friends and family at home, and it means the world to me. So yeah, I'll play out with a bit of uh, running the last couple of bits, but yeah, if you get one chance in life to do it, do this one. Thanks for watching. The most famous turn in all of marathon running. And Ryan Herford, and then left on Volkin. Come on, feel the noise. Turn left on Bolton. Pinch line down there. You gotta savor this in. Or there's something else wrong with you. Wow. Took a lot to get here. God, what a cracking day. What a fabulous day out. I'm not sure I've ever had a better day out. Certainly, not my most beautiful marathon runs, but in terms of the running, certainly most beautiful in terms of everything else. Cracking day out. Well done, Boston. Twenty-six point two, baby. Twenty-six point two.